The Church of Sweden has been forced to respond to claims that it's ruled God must only be referred to in gender-neutral terms. Now, that story was spread by a number of international news outlets. Of course, the traditional expressions of Christian faith remain in the new worship book. However, some gender-neutral ways of addressing God have been added in some prayers. In Swedish, there is nowadays an official gender-neutral pronoun, hen. This word is not used at all in the worship book. Well, the church is, in fact, introducing just a few updates. At the beginning of services, it will be deemed acceptable to use three different ways of describing God. One of those will be gender neutral. And the Holy Spirit will also be referred to in the female grammatical gender. Well, to talk about how significant the changes are or not, we're joined now by political activist Kate Smirtwave and the leader of the Christian Voice Advocacy Group, Stephen Green. You're both very welcome to the program. Stephen, can we start with you? Um, is this a sign that the Christian Church is modernizing for the better and perhaps adopting values that could see more women, for example, join the ranks? I think we have to understand that there are people today who have had either a negative experience with their own father or no experience at all, no father there. And we do tend to uh, um, uh, understand God as father through our own experience of, of a father. And uh, so, so there, is, there is that challenge and, uh, and equally none of us is going to understand the, um, the Godhead, the Holy Trinity, as, as we should. Uh, you know, having said that, the, the Bible is, is perfectly clear. People are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ referred to God as his Father no fewer than 62 times in the Gospels in uh, 59 separate verses. So, uh, uh, you know, I can only speak as, as, as the Word of God says, and, and, and that is the reality. Kate, are things perhaps moving too far too fast? Could this be seen I suppose as an unnecessary move just to appease liberal elements within the church and Swedish society as a whole. Well, there is a sense in which it's unnecessary insofar as, you know, God is not male, God is not female. What God is, is entirely fictional. Um, and so we're in this world of updating an outdated institution when in actual fact, you know, the easy and obvious solution is simply to scrap it. The truth is that the history of organised religion and, you know, Christianity, no exception, is absolutely littered with, with, a, with a horrific trail of misogyny and also, you know, homophobia and racism and all sorts of other nasties. And what we need to do is to get rid of that now you know to me the sort of like switching to a gender neutral pronoun it feels like slightly rearranging the deck chairs on the titanic it is not that long ago that you know the church taught that women were essentially the property of their husbands and i think in the 21st century you know yes we could go back and start trying to revise that but what we should do that is the more sensible thing to do is to just accept that it's a nonsense it means you know it, it meant nothing then it means nothing now um, and choose to live our lives by our own you know choice of moral Moral values, you know, including well, equality, which seems like the most fundamental one. Well, there are millions of Swedes that will, of course, disagree with that sentiment, the followers of the Church of mm -hmm. Sweden. You know, Stephen, in terms of what Kate was saying there, is it sensible to stop using gender specific terms when referring to an entity, a deity, God? Well, I mean, first of all, I, I simply do, do, do not recognise the, uh, the caricature that, that's just been painted of the, of the church. I don't know where that's coming from. Well, that's strange, uh, Stephen, because secondly, you, you, your uh, wife with, said that you beat with, her, with didn't, didn't she? Stephen, do you want to respond to the allegations that you beat your wife with a piece of wood question. until she was bleeding? <laughs> with, with regard to the well, I think it's kind of a more important question, if I might be quite frank, Stephen. Yeah, OK, let's just stick to the Stephen, could you answer the more important question? Let's stick to the debate at hand Stephen, you've called for the death penalty oh, okay. 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 you know what what are we about talking about here? Kate, hold on. in the church it's not yeah, it hold on Come a second on, Stephen, Stephen, the, question. Stephen the, the point is about gender it, specific though. terms when referring to God Stephen oh dear Oh wow! It's, it's great to have an opportunity. Um, the, the, um, uh, this is not what, what we're talking about. Is, is not gender uh, gender inclusive language. Gender inclusive language is, for example, when it says, "Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly." We understand that the word "man" there means men and women. When we talk about mankind, it doesn't just mean men to the exclusion of women. It means all of us. So I reject this this this, this divisiveness, this um, uh, setting men and women at each other's throats. Real in real life, we have to get on with each other. But you see, in real life, you were at your wife's throat, weren't you, Stephen? 
You beat her with a piece of wood until she bled, and then right, she bled. That's, that's we, true, isn't Kate, it? Kate, we, we of course are not but, speaking but, but, I mean, about the, any the, of this. These, Come on, Kate. But, 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 Kate, let me put but, but, this point I mean, to you about the subject at hand here. Said. This Kate, is what hold, your hold ex-wife on. says, Stephen. You can't sit there and tell me that the church doesn't have a history of sexism when you yourself are notorious for it, Stephen, and, and Kate, homophobia we, Kate, as Kate, well. let's stop getting at, personal, please, please on this. I, I really, really want to get your thoughts on I, this case. I don't case. understand how we can have a conversation Kate, okay. about gender and not address the fact that we're talking to a wife, Peter. Okay, we do not need to get personal on this. We, we have enough to get busy with, with these we questions. Do. Okay, Kate, hold on. Could this prompt... Uh, this is a point I really want to bring up to you, Kate. Perhaps other churches, the Catholic Church, possibly the Church of England, seeing something like this happening and then deciding to double down on their conservatism, seeing that we don't want something like this to seep in to our beliefs. Well, it's strange, isn't it, the idea that, that some sort of sense of gender equality would seep into our beliefs. It suggests that our beliefs are bedded on some rather nasty uh, issues of gender inequality. And, you know, and, and to, to No, I'm talking about traditionalism. I'll liberal... defend myself. It's to, I'm talking about yeah. traditionalism through but, centuries but down the I year. Finish? It's been he. Yeah. I... Oh, I'm, I'm not, but I'm not arguing with you there. I mean, I agree that it is traditional, but the traditional history of the church is deeply, deeply sexist. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's interesting that you suggest that, oh, you know, if, if we move forwards too quickly, there'll be a backlash. The, the truth is, whenever we, we move forwards, there is always a backlash. There are haters out there. One of them is sat in your other studio having this conversation. There are haters out there, and they're going to hate, and that's no reason to stall the progress of greater equality going forward. Absolutely none. Stephen, does the Church of Sweden risk alienating mean... itself from other churches in, in other countries? Is it going to be, a, a, you know, almost a pariah in this term? I don't think we need to take any, any you know, any, any any lessons from those who actually hate the Christian faith. I mean, the 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 the, 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 the fact is that uh, you know God is depicted in Scripture as as male, and Jesus Christ came to earth as a man. And you know, mature people are going to be you know simply uh, understand that for you know for what it is. And uh, you know, and it's it it it, it, it it's, it's pointless. Um, you know, you know dragging through the you know through the gutter press about about things this is just uh, not, not going to get us anywhere you know we need to be uh, I think mature and talking about about the issues which are how do we present the, the Christian faith to people out there and I believe that we do that by being faithful to the scriptures faithful to the to the witness and the and the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ Kate well I mean you know if we want to look at like what the actual scripture says, the scripture says all sorts of horrific things. If you know, go back to the Old Testament, and and this God of yours, Stephen, is is killing people left, right, and centre. And and if you look at the New Testament, the most perfect woman is presented as a virgin who had a baby. It's not really an achievable life goal. Um, what we need to do is for the church needs to modernise, or you know, better still, let's shortcut that and simply get rid of organised religion, which has done nothing for women um, for centuries and indeed millennia, um, not just across Christian faith, but. Whole, across a whole range of faiths and you know and, and and ditto what the church is saying about you know gay people in some quarters what the church is saying about uh, disabled people there are all sorts of nasties out there and um, to suggest that the people are hating on the Christian faith well you know I'm afraid that, that there are people out there and I very much include yourself Stephen I mean I mean do you deny Stephen that you called for the death penalty for gay people <laughs> long pause, you know, we, we are, we long, are where we are. Pause, this, you we know, are because it's on record. Now, it, it, it's on in record. Our we know that you did. And I, but I can. It, no, but I'm, I, I'm, certainly I'm going, I'm going to accept what, what the Word of God says. And the fact is that we're coming up to Christmas, we're coming up to a time when we're going to be celebrating that God became man in Christ Jesus. And he did that in order to go to the cross to pay the penalty for your sins and for mine. And, uh, and, and that is the truth of the Christian faith. And all this um, um, well, you know, whole wash though, and, uh, and, 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 and yelling about it isn't and, going and to get us anywhere true, at all. Would that justify killing gay people would it Stephen would that be okay. a good reason to kill gay people in your opinion because that is what you've said you you call you know you've called for this Stephen I want to go not, back to, to the subject here this is not an ad hominem attack this is what you've said Stephen either back it up or retract it you know simple you're on air go for it Stephen I, I want to get back to the topic no, here hold on Stephen a second I want to put this point to you is what Kate was talking about as well the, the Christian church is struggling in numbers across the world we, we know this is it the fact that it continues to hold on to certain regressive, antiquated values part of the reason why it is struggling? Well, I don't think it is struggling at all. I, I think, well, the numbers know, in, are down, in, aren't in they? Places where the, numbers, yeah. where, 
Mm. No, in, 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 in places where, 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 the, where the word of God is, is preached faithfully, in, in Africa, in Asia, dare I say in Russia, the Christian faith is flourishing. Do, do you, you mean know, we in, do in have parts a crisis of Africa in the, where homosexuality in the West is because, punishable by but, death? You know, our problem is that the, you know, we, don't, we don't know how much to, uh, you know, to, to, to bend with, with society and accept the mores of the, of the day. The, once somebody said that, that the sea and the ship is great, uh, sorry, the, the ship in the sea is great. The sea in the ship is bad. And if the church is in the world, that's good. If the world comes into the church, then we, it'll, the world will do for the, for the church the same as the sea does for the ship, I'm afraid. So we need to stay faithful to the scriptures. And, you know, and we, need to, you know, we need to have a, 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 a loving approach to, to ministering the gospel, which is a gospel of forgiveness from sins. And that, that's my sins and that's yours. Okay, we're just coming to the end. We've got about a minute left. Kate, 30 seconds just to uh, summarize your views on this topic, if you would, please. Well, yeah, I mean, the bottom line is that, of course, churches should modernise, of course, all religious organisations, and indeed all organisations should continually seek to modernise and to promote greater equality, you know, between the sexes and also, you know, between different races and between people from all sorts of different backgrounds and different life experiences. Um, you know, but, but the church has a very poor history on this. It's not, it's not a question of it catching up with the times. It's way behind the times. It has a history of treating women pretty horrifically. You know, the best plan would be to get rid of it. And frankly, also, you know, to get rid of those people advocating for it uh, who have a history of, of, you know, violence, horrific homophobia themselves, such as, I think you know who I mean. Stephen, 30 seconds. This isn't about the church. Is it, the, and Christmas is, is about the person of Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. about the pagan did he come festival to earth to, yeah, to go to the cross all. to forgive us yeah. our sins, or, or did he not? That's the, that is the question we must all be asking ourselves. Well, well, he didn't really. There's not much evidence to suggest he did. Seems pretty clear that that, that he's, well, that, he's as I, much I mean, of a fictional character. You know, as also, of also, the discussion mustn't be conducted in, 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 in a childish way like that. Of course, of course, it, there's, there is there is overwhelming evidence of, of the life of Christ, not least in the Gospels, and that's where I'm. Standing. Well, I appreciate both of you coming on the program and sharing your views with such vigor. Political activist and comedian Kate Smirthwaite and leader of Christian Voice and advocacy group in the UK, Stephen Green. Thank you both very much. Pastor John Reiser says he remembers saying prayers over the morning announcements at this Ohio public school when he was a teenager. It's, it's never been a problem. There's been complaints that have happened over the years, which for the most part, uh, the school board and superintendents have just said, hey, that's the way it goes, but we're going to continue to pray. But now West Branch High School has stopped a decades old tradition after the district was slammed with a letter from the Freedom From Religion Foundation saying the practice was a constitutional violation. But our public schools do not have a religion. Our public schools do not take sides on religion. Games are a little different now. A reciting of the national anthem and then no prayer. But a silent protest from half of the room that screamed prayer matters. Brooke Pigeon made these shirts. The foundation of Christianity is in their life. It's in their home. It's everywhere they go and it's in their heart. And while the majority of families who come out to these games say prayer is an important part of their identity, there has been some opposition. It goes North Korea is denouncing a new American nuclear strategy that calls for the U.S. to enhance its arsenal of low-yield nuclear weapons. A spokesperson for the North Foreign Ministry's Institute of American Studies says the U.S. strategy is a declaration of war against the world. As part of our defense, we must modernize and rebuild our nuclear arsenal, hopefully never having to use it but making it so strong and so powerful that it will deter any acts of aggression by any other nation or anyone else. Perhaps someday in the future, there will be a magical moment when the countries of the world will get together to eliminate their nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, we are not there yet.